Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> My name is Michelle Mater, and I'm a faculty member here at the New School in the School of Media Studies and Film. And on behalf of myself and the New School community, I'd like to welcome you all and thank you so much for joining us here this evening. We have a great program set for you. The New School is delighted to host another Times Talk. In fact, it's the 42nd event that we've presented with the Times since 19, I'm sorry, 2003. How about that? It's all jammed in. Um, <clears throat> our partnership with the New York Times is indicative of the New School's commitment to emphasizing the relationship between culture, the arts, and current social issues. We believe in utilizing the arts, and more specifically media, my area of expertise, as a tool to encourage constructive dialogue, activism, and entrepreneurship. This is one of the guiding attributes of the university. For over 40 years, the School of Media Studies has been at the forefront of artistic production, media theory, and the business of filmmaking. Within Media Studies, the New School's Media Management Program is one example of academic programs that we offer, bringing together scholarship and entrepreneurship. If you'd like to learn more about our degree programs and certificate offerings, please feel free to visit our website at www.newschool.edu for more information. And with that, I'd like to ask you to join me in welcoming Michelle Gray, Director of Programming for the New York Times series, Times Talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Good evening, I'm Michelle Gray, the Director of Programming for the New York Times live conversation series, Times Talks which pairs New York Times journalists with the brightest and boldest creative minds from the fields of film, theater, music, art, fashion, literature, and science. I'm delighted to welcome you to tonight's event with the one and only Sean Diddy Combs, a Grammy award-winning record producer, songwriter and artist, stage and screen actor, entrepreneur, and philanthropist. Combs will discuss his prolific career, creative inspirations, and his critically acclaimed documentary, Can't Stop, Won't Stop, A Bad Boy Story, with TV host, author, podcaster, and New York Times contributing writer, Toure. The film takes a behind-the-scenes look at last year's 20th anniversary Bad Boy reunion show, the biggest homecoming in hip-hop history, and chronicles the meteoric rise of Combs and his iconic record label from its founding in the early 90s to the top of the music business. Please join me in giving a very warm welcome to Toure and Sean Diddy Combs. Thank welcome. You. Welcome. Welcome. You know, man, it seems like it was just yesterday I've known this man over 20 years. I remember sitting there talking to you about your first album, which you were going to call the greatest hits of Puff Daddy. Right? The first album was going to be the greatest hits. That's the audacity that you've been coming with since day one. But, you know, I want to keep it real for a second because, you know, I've known you for a long time and I haven't seen you in a minute. And when you see people you really know who you haven't seen, what's the first thing you always want to talk about? How's your kids, right? That's, that's, that's your real wealth. And you got six beautiful kids. I want to give you a minute to brag on them. You got a football star at UCLA. You got a young rapper coming up. Tell us about your children. Well, hello, everybody. Good evening. <laughs> Thank you. One, two. Thank y'all for joining us with the evening with Diddy. Nice, smooth conversations with my brother Torre. I'm showing Diddy Combs, ladies and gentlemen. And, um, nah. <laughs> but, yeah, my kids, that's, it's, it's incredible. Number one, that they're healthy. That's the, that's the thing you really care the most about. That my kids are healthy. We're we gonna work through it. Don't worry about it. The mic's been cut off from me a bunch of times. Um, but yeah, my kids are healthy and, and they, they are all really nice people. And you know, when, when you know, I was coming up and I started having kids at a young age, you know, I was on the road a lot. So I didn't get to spend a lot of time with my sons. 
And now um, I live with my sons. I spend every day with them. You know, they're under the wing. We're bonding. We're learning about each other, you know, even more and more now. So my relationship with my sons have been great because um, Justin's going to get in this industry. He just graduated UCLA. Wow. And um, you have Christian who has a, a single that's coming out with Jeremiah like in two weeks. Under the name King Combs. Under the name King Combs, yes. Yeah, he just skipped me all of them <laughs> and just it went to King <laughs> Combs. <laughs> so that's what's going down. And then Quincy is on the, the hit show Stars. Yeah. Um, and so he's doing very, very well. So they're really making me proud. And my three, my three girls, they just went to middle school and they're, they're happy, and so, so God is really, really great. Thank you for asking. Wow, wow, that's what's up, that's what's up. Six kids, unbelievable. Tell us about some of your parenting philosophies, you know what I mean? What, what values you try to impart, what punishments you might use at times when you need to, you know, yeah, use the uh, stick? Uh, I mean, as far as, far as my kids, I'm, um, I'm a parent like my mother or my grandmother, so I'm a parent how I was raised. And so I, I was raised to really have um, self-respect, respect for my family name, um, to be competitive in school, the importance of an education, um, being a gentleman, being a man, evolving, growing. So you, I come from a rich heritage. We as black people, once we tap in, we come from a very, very rich heritage of that level of love and raising. And that's what I instill in my kids. I make sure that they just don't know their uh, African-American history, where they start off as slaves. I make sure that they know their whole history, the history that they didn't teach in schools, making sure that they know that they're kings and that, that, that they're kings and that they're queens. And um, that's, that's the biggest you know, message that I give to them, is to respect themselves. And if they respect themselves, they respect others. And I raise them, and I don't, I don't, I don't take anything else but that, you know, because that's how my mother raised me. Um, and so, yeah, there's definitely consequences in the Combs household. <laughs> and um, like what? Yeah, like yeah. What'd you, like, like what you do? When they, when they was coming up, I, I you know it was a couple of whoopings. Yeah, yeah. That's how I stayed out of trouble. <laughs> you know, there was some punishments. It was it was you know it was it was real life raising of a child. I make no apologies for that. Shout out to my son Justin right there in the building. Where's Justin, stand up, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. I remember going to Justin's. Wow. Wow. That's what's up. So Forbes just came out with the 100 greatest business minds. You are one of them. They put you worth over $800 million, close to the billionaire club. Is that important to get it to get over from 800 to a billion? Does that matter? Without a doubt. <laughs> Without a doubt. Um, you know, that's one of the things that that I think we've sometimes always shot away from is is economic power. And, you know, I represent, you know, the first wave of black economic power. And we will see this continue to flourish. And we will continue, to, we, we, we'll, we'll see this start to be able to grow our communities and we be able to um, help ourselves out. So being on that list, um, it is important in the world of economics and getting money out here. So it, it's something that I'm proud to be a part of. And, and it's something that, um, you know, I take pride in changing the narrative because there's a bunch of lists that I could be on. but. Um, that's the list I'm on, and that's the list I'm gonna continue to be on. That's what's up, that's what's up. So, you know, one of the great businessmen of your generation, I wanna try to dig into how you did it and why you did it. And when I think about Puff, and you know, I know he's so long, I'm stuck on Puff, Diddy is still new to me, so I'm gonna stick with Puff. But, you know, I think about Drive. I think about, you know, that you used to, on the walls of Bad Boy, you used to say, sleep is for losers, right? And I think you've, you've changed out of that, but still, you, we look at you on Snapchat and whatever, you wake up with this drive and this energy to create, innovate, to, you know, to, to make things happen for yourself and people around you. What are you exactly driven to do? Like, what are you trying to accomplish with this drive that propels you out of bed every morning? I'm really trying to inspire. 
you know, I'm, I'm trying to be a, a platform of, of inspiration during a time where I feel inspiration is needed. Um, but I started out, you know, I, I just wanted to make some money, you know. Um, I woke up one day and um, there was like seven roaches on my face. And I was like, um, I got to do something about this. I don't like this feeling right here. And, you know, it, it just started out as um, me wanting to take care of my family. And then, you know, then I wanted to make people dance. Then I wanted to show the world that, you know, we could be, you know, not just rappers or athletes, that there's, you know, other jobs for us in the, on the executive side of things. And, you know, as, as time has gone on, what motivates me now is to, to really, really inspire people to, to be a part of the change that, that is coming and, and that we're all going to be a part of. I mean, when, what do you want the world to think when they see you or when they think of Sean Combs, Diddy, Puffy, you know, whatever? What do you want them to think? What adjectives do you want them to attach to you? My dream? My dream is, like, for when people see me that they smile, you know? Um, I'm going to make you love me. Yeah, nah, it's, it's like a natural thing. If I could give you anything, I would love to give you that joy, give you that smile, give you that feeling. I don't want to, I've had times where I've come into the room and like the whole room would get shook up or something, you know? And you could give off one energy, you could give off a different energy, but if I could give off that love and that joy and that, and that, and that feeling of belief, that you know, that's my dream come true is I walk in the room and everybody, I can make everybody smile. I talked to a couple of friends of ours, people who work for you, with you, what have you, and two of the things they said that make you special as a businessman is that you are super fearless and you have vision. Uh, and on top of that, you make sure that the vision is executed. But talk about how to be super fearless, especially you know, in a context where you're, you're not in physical danger, you're not in economic danger. So what does super fearless mean at your level? Super fearless is, is, is really wanting true change. Um, I, I feel like I'm fearless because I, I have a fear. And, 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 that, and that fear is that things are not going to change and, you know, we're going to continue to go backwards. Um, you know, as a black man, I can't get to this point, have six kids and not care about my race, my people. And so when I look at you know, I was watching the movie, um, I'm Not Your Negro. Anybody here saw that? Okay. James Baldwin. Yes. Raul Pat. Yes. And nothing has really changed. And nothing has really changed. And, you know, that's what I fear. So I have to be fearless because I, I, I have to be a part of the change. And what, what that comes it, what that comes with is is is, is really being a, taking some responsibility to you know to think not out, to think outside of yourself. I feel I've evolved in going from me to we, and when you have that type of responsibility, then then you don't have no time for fear because you can really make a change. But if you're scared, you're not going to change nothing. And so that's where my fearlessness comes from. You're definitely a man of vision. You know, you have envisioned things several times in your career from the, the hip hop soul sound, which came out of nowhere. You helped create that, um, you know, to all what's going on at Bad Boy, to the other things, the Sean John, the Ciroc, the water now. W talk about your vision. Do you need to like sit by yourself and create or do ideas just hitting you all the time? Or how do you, how do, you do it? Uh, I would say the process now is, is, is I need to just like turn on some James Brown and um, do what I do. Um, have me a little bit of Ciroc. <laughs> Dance a little bit and just give me a big whiteboard and I just start just putting down all types of ideas and dreams and visions, the craziest things, the things that I, I, I'm almost hesitant on going to write. I just go and I write it. And um, you know, when I get finished and I wake up in the morning with, you know, maybe a little hangover, 
<laughs> there's some pretty good ideas up on that wall, you know, and so that's a part of my creative process of just really being in tune to the culture, seeing my kids, like, you know, life experience, you know, I'm a real time visionary, you know, I, I, I move, I market, I dream, I create in real time, but I've gone from a, a dreamer to a realist, and, and it's real out here. You, you, you are a, an incredible marketer. What is the key to getting to, when you create a product, be it a vodka, a jeans, or an album, whatever, what is the key to then making a lot of people want that thing? Shout out to all my entrepreneurs in the house. Any entrepreneurs in the house? Yeah. Um, when, I create, when I create that thing, it has to be uncut. You know, that's really when I've had, I've had my best marketing wins is when it, it, it had a, a, a story behind it, when it had some heart behind it. Um, and and it, was, it, was, it was authentic. It was really, really true. It wasn't anything that was, like, inspired by, like, um, you know, just, just a regular Madison Avenue type of ad agency. It's, you know, very, very, very disruptive. Yeah. It has to be matter, it has to be something that matters to people. It has, it has to be something that evokes some emotion. You know, it has to be something that people care about. It has to be something that they, that they, that they want. I ask a lot of people, what is your superpower? And to get from Mount Vernon to Homeby Hills and all that, you know, and sitting there wanting a pool to, you know, I mean, having what you have, you must have some superpowers. So what do you, what do you think? What do you think your superpowers are? I have one superpower, and that's my relationship with God, you know, so. When I'm more in tune with God, it gets crazy. You, can, you know what I'm saying? It just, it's just so beautiful. There's nothing that I can't do. And, um, yeah. I mean, you said that in the movie. That was one of the dopest parts of the movie, uh, Can't Stop, Won't Stop. Who saw that? Anybody see that? When, when I believe it was Ann Gibson was saying something, and you were like, yo, my life don't work like that. I can make anything happen. Uh, and you've proven that over and over, but the question is how? How is it that you go through the world making anything happen? I'm ready to put the work in that it takes to make it happen. That's how I make it happen, you know? There, there's, you could make anything happen, but you have to make that choice. And that choice, sometimes people see the end result. They don't see everything that comes along with it. I'm ready for the ups, the downs, the peaks, the valleys. I'm ready for any type of terrain, you know? And, um, yeah. I mean, I think there's something in the way that you lead people <laughs> and the way that you direct people and the way that you communicate your vision. And we see that in Can't Stop, Won't Stop. What is, what is the leadership style of that man? Um, it's like this. It's like, if you want to go work a nine to five, you know, and, and you don't want to go in, to a place where you could get crazy and, and, and change the world. And you shouldn't probably be working at Combs Enterprises. But you have, you have that combination of professionalism and also that level of excellence. Those are the type of people that I work with. So when you get a behind the scenes limp, this, 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 is not, this is not no play play that we're playing with, you know. But don't get it twisted. Like, this, this is the vibe of working with me. Check this out. So, <laughs> so, so check this out. That's my staff that's doing that. Shout out to my staff that's in here. Give yourselves a round of applause. And see Groovy Lou in the house. And, and my, my leadership style has evolved from, from fear to inspiration and motivation, but you're still gonna get that tough love because at the end of the day, we gotta come out with the win. And I don't do it by myself, I do it with my team right there. Thank y'all for coming out. A long time ago, Andre Harrell, one of your mentors, now he's working with you at Revolt, um, he said, Puff will do whatever he has to do to win. 
if he has to be suave, if he has to yell, if he has to go in the room and close the door and get on his knees and beg, he will do whatever he's got to do to win. Is that you? Um, it depends on what I'm begging for. You know what I'm saying? No, for real. I'm not, I'm not really like the begging type, That's, but there's certain things and certain times, like for my children, I may get on my hands and knees and beg, but um, besides that, like, you know, I, I want to... I want to come out with the solution. I don't want to just be having problems. I want to close the deal. I want to get to the change. I want to get to the money. I want to get to the, let's get to, to, to being able to take care of ourselves, you know? And I have a certain type of knack um, of doing business where I know how to get the deal done because I'm going for an end result. And it's not just monetary. It's, it's for us to succeed in what we're doing. But sometimes within business, I mean, especially being black can be, you know, a barrier to entry, a, you know, barrier to moving forward. And you said, I wasn't allowing them to treat me like a black man. And how do you do that? You have to be able to walk away. You know, there's a lot of cats out here that get a taste of the money. And when it comes time to doing that deal and really being in that ruthless negotiation, they really can't stomach walking away. I'm really, really crazy. I will walk away. We could be at 43 million. If I want 45 and I'm just deserving of that and that is the, the rate, you're gonna give me 45 million. <laughs> and I, and and I want to explain to you why. Because I set the market value for my people. You got to understand that. I set the, when, I, when I went into BMG and Arison and set the price at 46 million, that changed the whole game. Not, in civil, not since civil rights. The only thing that has really changed for us since civil rights was hip hop. Hip hop was, it has been our only hope, you know? And so when I'm out there and I'm in the business, I'm doing it for the culture, I'm, I'm just aware that what, whatever is the price that I set, it doesn't even affect me no more after I set it. It affects everybody that's coming after me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Take me into your day a little bit. What, do, what, do you, what time do you usually wake up? What do you do in the morning? How do you, how do you win the morning? How do you launch yourself into your day properly? Um, well, for like two and a half years, I, I, I was going through like a lot of um, different like ailments, like pain and stuff like that. Like God has a way of slowing you down when you need to just slow down. And my knee was messed up, I had an operation on my shoulder. And then so, you know, during that time, I was just burnt out. You know, I, I did all this stuff. I didn't really take care of myself. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't really thinking performance. I was talking performance and I was, you know, I was young, and I, but I wasn't really looking at the long game of it all. And the way you treat your body and the way you treat your, your, your the way you eat and the way you take care of yourself, um, you know, is something that I wasn't doing. So I really didn't have a time to go to sleep or, or things like that. I wasn't really conscious of that. I was just in the grind. And I'm not knocking anybody that's when you're in the grind, you gotta do what you gotta do. Um, but now, now that's, that's definitely changed a little bit, and this is what I try to do. I try to um, get up and get into the gym by 10. Um, and Get up when? Like 9 or 8? Like 2 before 10. <laughs> you get up like 10? 10 a.m., but I'm up till like 3 in the morning. Right. You got to let me get started. Right, right. <laughs> I need, I, I've been working all these years. They got to get up and start before me so I can catch me an extra <laughs> hour. <laughs> That's what I got the staff for. <laughs> <laughs> but I get up and then, um, you know, I started meditating um, and just really taking the time to give gratitude and pray. And that really, really, really changed my life, you know. And Meditation. I, and, I, and I just started that. This, this like, you know, I'm maybe like three months in. And I'm telling you, anytime if, if anybody in here, I know y'all heard it works. It's nothing even, it's nothing mystical about it. You taking time to, it is mystical though. It does get really magical, you know. So the bottom line, y'all should try some meditation. I do the meditation, and then I, I, I get the calls, and um, 
I I just I just run this black enterprise with just a bunch of energy, and 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 I just keep on going and going and going to like maybe one in the morning and then. I, I chill out. Uh, tell us a little bit about your meditation practice. Is it is it every day you like you know like close your eyes like yeah. rustle on the floor yeah. and like yeah. with the mantra and all that? No, I go, go I go to Google and I put in ten minute morning meditation. <laughs> <laughs> and then I press play and I just hope for the best. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, you know, it, I took that time for myself, you know, and um, life is a crazy contradiction because then on one side I was I beat myself up real hard, and then the other side, you know, I kind of saw you know um, things deeper, and it's just a part of growing up. And if you could put it together quicker and sooner, you could have more fun in life because you you you'll be able to have a little bit more control. You alluded a little bit there to the voice inside you, and I'm curious if, if, if we could hear the voice inside you, is the voice yelling at you like, you know, like, like you can do it, and positive, or is it like, you ain't shit, you ain't done enough, and pushing you to go further, higher? Like, what, it, what is the voice saying to you? You the baddest motherfucker that he ever built. You a king, king, put it on him, king. Get him, pop. Get him, fuck him up, yeah, yeah, win for the people, it's for the kids, let's do it, black excellence, let's go! So, so I sound just how I sound yelling on the record, but just, <laughs> just in my head all the time. You, you talk a lot about black excellence, what is black excellence and how is it different than white excellence or Asian excellence or anybody else? Um, yeah, there, there is a difference. There's a difference. It's a, um, the difference is, is that we, we haven't really forcefully tapped into our excellence. You know, sometimes you could possess magic or superpowers and you're afraid of them. You're afraid to tap into them. I remember Superman, he ain't really want to fly. He was scared, you know, and we, 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 we have this magic about us that, that we were able to be brought over here to be treated the way we've been treated, and we still get up with love in our hearts now. Like shit could be crazy. Pain is pain. We get up with love and love in our hearts, and we still have to deal with that pressure. You know, like it's fucked up. You hear it all the time. It sounds cliche, but yeah, you black, you wake up, damn. You know, some fucked up shit could happen to me today. It don't, no matter who you are, you know, and that's a hard way to live, to live in fear, you know, and, 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 and to live like that. And um, what was the question? <laughs> the difference between black excellence and oh, white excellence. Yeah, so, so it's really in, in black excellence when we tap into our magic. So when you see those things, when you see Oprah and she's doing her thing, or you see all these, all these kids online and they're crafting their art as comedians, or you watch Dave Chappelle, or you're looking at um, our, our brilliant minds right now that are, are going and being engineers and scientists and doctors, and it's really changing the narrative. You know, because if you just constantly get negativity, negativity, this is the image about you. You, you were born a slave, you was this, this is the way it looks. You know, and then we get a couple of things like the Cosby Show, Oprah, you know, Puff Bad Boy, a couple of wins and things like that. But, you know, we got to promote our greatness because the things that we have ha that we have to deal with get so promoted, overly promoted and marketed to us. I have to be a part of the change. I got to be a part of the narrative. I'm, enter I'm entering the psychological warfare to hit y'all with different images, to reset your mind so we can elevate. Back into the structure of your mind, or at least how you use your mind, because you usually have five to 10 projects going on at once. You're in about five industries right now and different things going on and within each of those industries. What systems do you have in place for yourself just to keep everything straight with the different goals and the different timetables and make sure, okay, I'm getting you know, the Revolt Conference done and I'm getting the next 
flavor of Ciroc ready and the ad for Sean John is on, um, you know, all the different things. How do you keep all of it straight? I have a, a, a great team of people around me. And, you know, I, I got to a point as a businessman and a person where I, I hit my, my ceiling. You know, I was, I was so, protect, pro, so protective and so controlling of everything, and I still am a little tiny bit, but I know, I know I've improved a lot, though. Has he, staff, has he improved on that, yes or no? They work for him. Thank you, James. I see. It wasn't like a standing ovation. It wasn't like a ruckus. Yeah, yeah, it was very like, it yeah. It wasn't he, what... He approved. We'll deal with that tomorrow at 4 p.m. emergency you. staff meeting. <laughs> It's the staff. Look, you know, you used to be making all your money from music, right? Now it's Ciroc, and then Sean John, the water is helping, the TV revolt is helping. But at what point did you, because two th in 2000, the, the revenue of the record business started to plummet, and it plummets throughout the double O's. It just goes straight down. At, what was the moment that you said, oh, I can't, just be in this music thing anymore because this is not producing the returns that it used to, I need to diversify. Like, what, what was the thing that told you, I need to get other things? Um, it, it wasn't out of fear, it was more out of opportunity. You know, it was, it was really looking at, um, you know, the, 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 the hip hop, the potential of the hip hop economic system and the potential of, of um, you know, the communities I'm from, people of color, no matter what color, you know, and, you know, mostly hip hop, you know, really, 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 really looking at that opportunity, you know, and what's the, what's the question again? <laughs> what was the moment that you said, yeah, I'm oh, sorry, this, this, I this got a little business, nervous, yeah. This I got, business, yeah, I got yeah, I got you, yeah. Um, yeah, it, w it was just looking at the the opportunity. It was it was so it was so much um, that wasn't being done. You know, it was so many things that we could have done as entrepreneurs that it weren't being done. When I was looking at Barry Gordy and he had mahogany, I was like, you know, why didn't he, you know, start a clothing line? Okay, why didn't he get a fragrance for mahogany? When I was looking at the, you know, um, Motown Review, I was just like, oh, why didn't we have a television show or our own network? And so, and so, so, and so that was the thing that, that I really saw. What is an industry that you want to get in that you're not currently in? I want to invent something um, that's really, really simple, that um, really helps out a lot of people, but makes a whole lot of money. And I'm talking about like a couple of trillion dollars, like something that's just crazy, like the light bulb or something like that. <laughs> That's the, I want to get in. I want to be an inventor. That's my new thing. You want to be an inventor. You want to invent like a product, like a mass-produced product. I want to invent a bolt. I want to invent a toilet seat. Something that we, we know that is crazy, crazy. That, that, that a thing that everybody needs. The light bulb. <laughs> well, whatever the new version that, that, that is, that's what I want to invent. See, it, it, I mean, I see you, you're a showman. I mean, right, you talk about P.T. Barnum, right? I would think, like, Puff's going to try to create his new hip-hop Disney world, right? So everyone can come see, you know, the fireworks that he's going to put on there. Um, I don't really want to, I don't want to pimp out the culture, you know. I want to really, <laughs> you know... One of your questions that I didn't, I didn't quite answer was, you know, how do I keep it all together? And one of the things is, in order for me to grow as a businessman and grow as a person, it's going to be the people that I have around me. So I, I used to be out there really just looking for entertainment talent, you know. Now I'm out there looking for, you know, executive talent. Talent that, that, that's from my communities, not from my communities, but are like-minded and together, you know, we could do great things. And so the only way I can keep it together, I have to start trusting other people. I have to start empowering other people. I can't be the only rich guy on the list. I can't be the only guy on the block. I, have, I, I need to be able to empower the next generations of me because that's the legacy, you know, that I want to leave behind. But I can't do that without talented, new, um, creative minds and brilliant minds. And that's what I'm out here on the search for, you know. And, and that's how I didn't answer that, but that's one of the ways I was able to keep everything together is my team of people, but going to that next level, 
you know, I need, I need to make sure that my recruitment and that I'm really working with the best if I want to be the best. All right, so let's nurture those people right now. Forbes says you are one of the 100 greatest business minds in America today. Um, what business advice do you have for that next generation of executive that's coming up? What do they need to know? What do they need to be thinking about? I think it's um, the biggest thing that I can say is, is, is just the reality, going back to what I said, you know, before was, was you know, it's a, you could be a dreamer, but it's important that you're, you're a realist and that you, you understand what it's going to really, really take to be great and to be successful at whatever you're doing. And if, if you're able to digest that reality and, and really focus on doing what it takes, um, you, you have high, high possibilities and chances for success. And, but if you're not giving something your all, believe me, you're not, you're not going to be able to fuck with a cat like me or fuck with somebody or, or Oprah, you know, or, or, or any of the guys that were, you know, on that, on, on that list of great minds. And the thing is, is that there's, there's, there's so many of me in my communities and I, I want them to know that they can do it, but they have to deal with the reality, the real hard fact reality of what it's going to take to really, really have us build our own economic system so we can take care of ourselves. When you say, like, put yourself all into it, you mean the clock, you mean your mind, you mean your heart, but, like, what else do they not realize? No, I mean, you, I mean, you can have fun. You could, you could have fun and enjoy your life. I'm not saying that. I'm just, I'm just talking about p people nowadays have, have high expectations for where they want their lives. You know, um, we have definitely um, bred dreamers, people that want to really, you know, make a difference. And, and that's a different way of life than it was, you know, back in the 70s when people were just happy to make ends meet and were all right. With this whole generation wants to be somebody. This whole generation wants to be great. You know, they, they want to make some noise. They want to do something. And so, you know, um, but, but with that, it, it, it comes the responsibility of doing the work. Your number one revenue stream now is vodka, Ciroc. Yes. What is the key to succeeding in the vodka business? I would say the product. You know, the, the, um, the key for me in any of my, my businesses is the product, whether it's the content that I make on, on, on television, um, or in films, or from the vodka to the to the water. This water tastes tastes really, really great. Aqua hydrate. You guys should get it. You know, to the music. You know, because you could be P. T. Barnum, but if you don't have no lions and tigers and bears and the you know and the midgets coming out the car, I'm trying to be politically correct. I'm just telling y'all the way the circus is. It's just the circus. <laughs> I don't know what to say, <laughs> but, but um, yeah. <laughs> you know, no, y'all don't, don't, I don't know if y'all know what's really going on. And let me explain something to y'all. Like, I, I get real, real passionate, and I could sit up here and talk for hours. And so my man Groovy Lou was teaching me to say, say less. So after I feel I made my points, I, I stop myself and I say, yeah. <laughs> say less. <laughs> I'm just learning, people. I'm a work in progress. Y'all watching it as it's going on, real time. I want to, uh, I want to bring y'all into the conversation, but I want to do a couple of personal, a little more personal questions before we bring the folks into it. Um, and, you know, I mean, you, you went through an extraordinary experience, you know, uh, taking your man big from the streets of Brooklyn up to the heights and then having to deal with, you know, him passing and... You know, I mean, a lot of people out here are dealing with difficult deaths in their lives. What do you say to folks who are like, yo, I'm, I'm depressed because, you know, my mom, my man, whoever, my husband, whatever died. You, you, you know, you never leave that person. They're always with you. But you, you come out, on the, you have come out on the other side. So how do you deal with that, pick yourself up, and, and keep going? It's something that's extremely painful, and I, I can't really tell anybody how to deal with it because there's different types of love and bonds and connections. There's some bonds and love that, that nobody can explain you into, um, into not being depressed. But there's a difference. If you think about that person, would they want you to live a, a, a tortured life like that? 
and um, this is God's world, and we can't torture ourselves, and it's something that we have to go through, and hopefully through that pain, we appreciate life more. Um, but I'm not the best one to give advice in that because, you know, I dealt with a lot of different things and went through a lot of levels of depression. Um, it's something that through your faith, we all, none, none of us are, are immune to it. We all have to go through it. It's a part of life. Um, and you have to hold on and, and, and you know, and keep, keep talking to God and he'll talk you through it. You talk a lot about love there. I want to talk about romantic love. You know, you've had a lot of amazing women in your life, but you've never been married. And you're a very serious family guy. From the beginning, you were shouting out your mom. You know, you know, you, when I remember you started blowing up. Justin's was the restaurant where everyone was hanging out. So family's always been really close to you, but you never pulled a trigger and got married. Why? Because I wasn't ready. You know, and I don't think that when you, and, and it's not with the, the person that, you know, I'm in a relationship with. It's me being honest with myself is if I'm ready and I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that to somebody. I'm not going to get into a, um, a marriage if I know in my heart that, that at this point I'm not ready. You know, I, I spend a lot of my life, you know, working and focusing on work. I'm, I'm just getting, you know, to the time now where I can focus on having my heart open, you know, more for love. Anybody that dealt with me before, they were dealing with my job and dealing with the, you know, you know, me really being crazy about my dream. And, you know, it just takes everybody a longer period of time, but everybody's different, you know. Um, I rather just, I rather know I have somebody's back and I love them and, and I love them forever than to um, have, have my relationship with them be defined on, you know, on that because other people did it, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and, and for me, I have to live my truth. And I have my fairy tale wedding dream too. I think my wedding is gonna be off the chain. <laughs> uh, it's gonna be at Pat St. Patrick's Cathedral. Just, uh, you know, they're gonna shut down the streets like they did for Princess Diana when I was growing up. My queen is going to come out. They're going to have the rose petals coming from the, down the thing. And we're going, and we're going to Studio 54. And what? And, and we're reopening that that night for the reception. <laughs> so I, I have, you know. And when you get married, what are you going to wear? I, I, didn't, I didn't see that much clarity in the dream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that would be the first thing you, you vision out. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, what do you want that you don't currently have that you can't just currently go out and get? <laughs> I definitely want to You know, I want peace, you know? I want, I want peace. But you know, I also want peace for my people, you know? I definitely, I definitely want like a day where, where we could take a deep breath like and chill for a second, you know? Word. Everybody deserve a little exhale, god damn. Shit is crazy out here, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, I dream about that, and I, and I want that for people, you know? Hell yeah. Um, let me get some of y'all in And the myself. <laughs> let me get some of y'all in the conversation. Jason, you got some Facebook questions. Folks can start lining up at the mics when they are presented. We're going to do Facebook first, and then we're going to talk to some of y'all and see what... Okay, this is what's up. All right. Randy from Facebook says, who inspires you? I'll probably say my number one source of information is, is the, 
the hip hop culture. When I, when I see, you know, the whole game changed and I see, you know, all of the up and coming new artists as bosses, their own bosses, you know, managing their own, um, their own companies and, and being entrepreneurs. I really get inspired. I, I want to play ball too. I'm like, yo, I want to, I want to play with y'all too. Like, you know, let's let's get out here and work. Let's let's make a difference. Let's do it. Guillermo from the Facebook says, "What would you like to accomplish next?" I would say my focus next is is building a historic team of people that I work with that that really are gonna come in and, and really change the industry and the world for the better. I look forward to working with great people and having great fun people around and it's having experiences going through the wars together and winning and being triumphant in the end. We got a lot of folks here. We got a good amount of time for this q and I'm not sure we're gonna get through all of y'all, but we're gonna try. Please ask succinct questions, no speeches. And please don't ask me to listen to your demo. Please, please, my sister, you first. No, definitely not. Good evening, Mr. Combs. Good evening. My name is Deidre Goldborn. I'm a recent graduate from the University of Buffalo in African slash African American studies. I remember growing up and I was watching you perform live on television with Sting. I would ask my mother who you were, and she said, That's Puff Daddy. And I was like, Who's Puff Daddy? He's a bad boy. <laughs> now, I went to your concert in Brooklyn at the Barclays Center and it's been one of the best experiences I ever had, especially after my mother passed away when I was a sophomore in college. So feeling that love is what I needed at that moment. Now, moving forward in the world that we're currently in today, in the era that we're in, how do you continue and plan to continue to keep striving for black excellence? This is a very, very exciting time for us. This is a very, very exciting time to also, um, it's always been exciting to be black, but it's, it's extra exciting now because you know we're, we're waking up, we're becoming more conscious. We're, we're, we're starting to understand um, you know, the power that, that, that we have. Um, but we need, we need drastic change. Um, I would say the number one thing is accountability and responsibility. Um, you know, I'm not going and, and blaming nobody for what we're doing to each other. I'm not blaming the decisions that, that, that some of us, you know, make. Those decisions, there's no way for us to get around and, and keep putting the burden on, 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 on the past. It's not easy to erase the past, but the way that we get to a point of not being on the bottom is that we have to take self-accountability. So we can't wait for you know, the government to help us. We have to really, really start helping ourselves. And that means making sure that we build our own businesses, that we communicate, that we support each other, you know, and, that, and that we really, as, as a nation, really, really come together and, and, and go from me to we. And I think that's the thing, that's the only thing, wait, the only thing that's gonna save us is us. There's no rescue party coming, and so we have no choice but to be excellent. We have no choice. That's how high the bar is for us to even make it up out of the situation that we're in. So we will continue to promote that, continue to push it, continue to embrace it, you know, to celebrate it and to amplify it. And we all are part of black excellence. Even some people that are not black, trust me, you know, you could be a part of it too. It's a feeling, it's a feeling. Word, that's what's Thank up, you very my much. brother. Yeah. Good evening, Mr. Combs. It's an Hello. honor and pleasure to talk to you here today. Um, Thank you. you. You came on TV in 97 and it's been inspiring me ever since. 97 was a crazy year. It was an inspiring year. Um, and you've always been at the vanguard and the forefront of things. And a lot of people might not remember, but you were one of the first people to introduce the nation to Barack Obama. And I seen the other day on your Instagram that you were continuing that conversation with him. I know it might be top secret, but could you let us know what
what that conversation was like. Well, that is exactly on my list. Thank you so much. <laughs> what were you talking to the president about? Yeah, first of all, um, I wanted to say thank you for, for, for the kind words that you gave. I mean, thank you very much. It means a lot to me. Thank you very much. And thank you for the kind words. And um, yeah, well, I, I just, it, it just, it was a fluke of something that happened. And, um, you know, I, I, I reached out and, and you know, he had time. And I was like, where? And I was like, <laughs> shit. Yeah, like, could you be there? At, I can't say the time. I could say the time because it's over. Can you be there at five? I was like, hell yeah, I could be there at five. <laughs> you know, and so we in this, you know, top secret situation, <laughs> you know. And um and I was like, um I was telling him I was mad because I ain't get I, I ain't really get the memo on on that on that going away party. That last that last joint where it got real black in the White House. The one that Chappelle was talking about on SNL. Yeah, yeah. And so he, and then he told me, like, we called your people. I was like, word. He was like, man, you missed a good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with the other stuff, you know, I can't talk about y'all. I got to take that with me. <laughs> but no, no, it, it was it was just positive laid back stuff. We wasn't talking about, you know, world politics or getting into that. It, it was really um you know, um, it was dope. I can't tell you. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. Good evening, Mr. Kong. Uh, my, my name is Monique T. Marshall. I'm the founder of Black Two Business, very much inspired by everything that you've done, Howard University graduate. Um, H U. Yes, you know. So um, a lot of what you talked about, my platform is geared towards economic development, building entrepreneurs. Um, in that, I find that sometimes it's hard, the hardest part can be building a solid team and knowing who to have on your team and when to get rid of people. So what are some things that you've done to, you know, figure out who's the best, who are the best people for your team? Um, it's something that I'm in processing now. It's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a recruitment process. I, I think that, um, you know, I'm excited about developing a, a new way to recruit from our communities because I don't think that the typical way that recruiters recruit, that they really, really go and look for the, for the genius and the magic. And, and, and I feel like I'm good at picking talent. So I think for me, it's about seeing more people, you know. Um, Combs Enterprises is gonna take, you know, um, a tour on the road to go into every city and every community and meet the minds there and talk to them and hear their ideas. And, you know, I, you know I'm, I'm really, as I said before, it's, it's really getting into the psychological warfare and really showing and leading by example and really going out there and then, then hiring people and showing people be successful. Um, the president of my company, um, she just got named president. Her name is Dia Sims. Dia left? Where Dia went? Where you at, Dia? Dia Sims. She, yeah, she's the president of my company, African American woman, um, who started out as my assistant and grew from my assistant to general manager to President of Combs Wine and Spirits. <laughs> to um, the former intern still gives back. Yeah, <laughs> never yeah. Never forget. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's, it's really doing things like that and showing that it could work. Not talking about, okay, we're going to go in the hood, we're going to do this. No, I want to see real action. I need to, you know, I'm, in real time, I need to see the evidence of, 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 the, of the growth, you know, and and so, you know, that's what we're going, I'm, we're going to be taking, doing unconventional methods of just going into our communities and finding who are the stars. That's what's up. Thank you. Shout out to French Montana. Just walked in the building. Thank you, brother. All right. Good evening. Uh, thank you so much for doing this. You're a huge inspiration. Uh, my name is Frank Dembo. I'm a technology entrepreneur. I started a seven-figure business that does clothing brands for artists. And my question is about the intersection between fashion and, and music. Uh, with your experience, you've seen clothing brands grow, especially for artists from you know, the tour merch they're selling at you know, the side table to now you know, Justin Bieber, other people actually selling in retail stores. What do you think is like the future of that industry and how are people gonna adapt 
for the changes because artists can now sell this stuff directly to their consumers. They don't really need some of these extra people to, to make it happen. Yeah, I think you're seeing the future of the industry. That's why I'm saying, that's why I'm really emphasizing um, the, the, the thinking and the mindset of building economic wealth. You know, because you can have an opportunity and you can get money. That doesn't make that you, that doesn't mean that you're making a plan to purposely get money, to make money, and to put other people on from your community and utilize the thing. As I said before, the only thing that really changed since civil rights was, was hip hop, you know? And so for us to let that be the, 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 the number one genre in music, making billions and billions of dollars, and we not seeing any of that, that's, that's not really what I'm gonna allow you know, by being here on this earth, you know, so, yeah. We got, <laughs> we got nine minutes and 20 seconds left and I got one more question, so we gotta. And, yeah, I just wanted to make sure I said to you, it's, it, it's giving artists freedom. It's making them their own bosses. They don't have to go to a, to a middleman and express themselves and tell somebody something's dope. If they believe it's dope, they could go direct to the consumer. And that's, gonna, that's the biggest change in the industry. And so that's why I emphasize while you're getting that money, make sure that you're setting it up so we can do bigger things. Sir. Hi, good evening. And uh, thank you both for such a candid, thoughtful, and inspirational talk tonight. A uh, couple of questions. First is, um, no, you, sorry, I'm sorry. This ain't a White House correspondent briefing. <laughs> one question, sir. I'm going to sneak a second one in. Um, you know, they say you learn more from your, your failures and your mistakes than you do from your successes. Could you share one of those failures and mistakes and what you learned from it? And you were at Chelsea Piers last night with 99 other uh, greatest minds of our lifetime. Uh, was there anybody in that group that you look up to or you, you're inspired by? Thank you. I would say um, something that I, I, I failed on was I, I started this magazine. It was called Notorious. A lot of people don't know about it because it wasn't successful. <laughs> but you know, I, I really learned that you know I really need to stay in my lane on on because I really wasn't even a big like you know magazine reader. Like, what was I doing if that wasn't really authentic to me? You know, getting in an industry just to get into it. So that was that was. That was my biggest lesson for me that I could be successful only if it's authentic and my, and my, and my heart is in it. And um, you know, as far as the people that in, in inspire me, I, I get an inspiration from everybody that was on, on that dais. Um, but I, uh, just to be honest, I don't wanna give you a, a BS answer. Like I really get, I get my inspiration from like Jay-Z you know what I'm saying, Oprah, you know, Muhammad Ali, um, Chandra Rhimes, um, yeah, Issa Rae. Yeah, and those are all great businessmen, but, f you know, for me, my inspiration is really coming from, from the hip-hop culture right now. Gotcha. Ma'am. Thanks so much. Thank you. I still want to do a business with everybody on the stage, though. <laughs> My name is uh, Sandra Fagan, and I'm a journalist, and I was assaulted while on assignment. And I came here because I, I want your help on a project that I'm working on. So I prepared something to give to you. Can you take it from me? Yeah, I'm sorry, I cannot take the envelope, but somebody else can take it, and I'll make sure that they look at it, though. Okay, I bring people together on holidays who don't have families that yes. survive concentration camps. Okay. And you and I, I've been doing that since the 1960s to three years ago when I got assaulted in the subway. Oh. I'd like to bring it back this year. I'm really concerned about the people who had a hurricane. Yes. I'd like to be able to bring them to New York for Christmas, that we come together, that the people volunteer, that they have a good Christmas. I have done this without any funding of any kind. If you know it, what it's like not to have funding, and I don't look for funding, because yeah. I believe God provides. Yes. So give, give me someone. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. I, I, I want to... I've changed many people's lives. I've interviewed famous people. I've covered uh, Henry Kissinger was my first job. I've been on the Today Show. I won the Humanitarian Award for my work. Yeah. I'd like to continue what I do. Thank Let you. me just close my favorite saying. So James Barry said, those who give sunshine to the lives of others cannot keep it from themselves. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank and, you. And please take it as no disrespect, me not taking it. I just, I just don't want to get subpoenaed okay, or something. So is there someone? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, sister. You got it. <laughs> but love, love, and God bless. And I will, I will. P.S. I'm a former process server. Yeah. <laughs> so you know that I was smart. You know that was a smart move. I know you didn't. <laughs> Go ahead. You got it. My name is India Hill. I work at HBO, and I'm also a writer and author. I like, grew up on your music, even back to like the Uptown Records days. You were literally dancing in the background of these yeah. songs. <laughs> um, yeah. My question for you is, as an author, I want to know, will you write your own autobiography one day? Yes, definitely. Yeah. I, I write the first edition of many to come, but the first edition is coming soon. But I will, and um, can't wait for you to read it. Do you have a timeline for it? Or? Ooh. Yeah, I would say in the next um, 24 months. Awesome. Yes. Oh, okay. Sir. Yep. Thank you. What's up, man? Thank you very much for coming out. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, with that said, music industry is changing fast. It's always been changing, but right now with technology, is changing really fast. As we see more independent record labels and management companies emerge, what do you think separates the good from the great? Interesting. Um, whenever I answer the question, what separates the good from the great is, is caring. Caring is a word that's, that's really thrown around, just like, yeah, I care. You know, but when you have people um, that are working on your team that really care about you, um, there's a difference in that from the management perspective. And, um, you know, from the from the record company perspective, we're we're in, we're right in the middle of technology changing. So I don't have the answers on what the deals are going to be, how it could get. It changes every day, every day that these numbers go up, every day that people get more engaged. You know, every everything changes. One thing I will say is that um, you know with you know with hip hop. You know, we have to make sure that we're rising to the occasion. We can't get caught up in, in the success. I have this thing like called no sleeping in a trophy room. And um, we, we still have a lot, a lot of growing to do in hip hop or in music as a whole. And I just think that in order for us to be great on the, on the independent record side of things, I think that it's, it's the caring aspect of, of, of taking it to the next level. What can you bring? that nobody else can bring, because it's a lot of people sounding alike right now. And um, I know that's, that's a wave, but, but in order to be great, you have to be different. Mm -hmm. Brother. Appreciate it, man. Good evening, Mr. Combs. My name is Anthony Leggett. I've been in the industry for a while. We've had a few interactions, and you've given me so much joy and inspiration. I just wanted to know what was the thought process and the mentality like receiving that first big check like as a young black man, like, like, how did you obtain that? Men what was that mentality of just obtaining it? I mean, if, if, if memory serves, you left, you got fired by Andre, and then you went to Clive Davis, and he gave you a million to start Bad Boy. And I was wondering too, how did you get Clive Davis to give you a million dollars when you were 22 years old? Yeah, uh, yeah, it it made sense, you know. Um, a lot of people also ask me, like, what's, what's one of your philosophies as an entrepreneur? And for me, it's simple. One plus one equals two. And I knew I had a lot of one plus ones plus ones. And, and I knew I had, I, I had heat. And I knew that that heat was valuable. And I just took the time and I did the math. So when I took the time and I read the contract, I did the math. I did the things that I probably didn't want to do. Um, I went and presented. Uh, you know, more of a fair situation back to them for both of us. And so you can make some money or you can make no money. And most people want to make some money. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're Thank coming you. down to the end and we, we referenced the beginning of your music career then. Um, and I'm sorry, y'all, we got about 40 seconds left. But I heard that you were quitting the music business. And the last time I interviewed you many years ago, you said, this next album is my last album. So are you quitting the music business? I'm, I'm not sure about records, but I definitely changed my mind on quitting the music business. Um, it looks like way too much fun right now. And so, <laughs> you know, we, we've been, we're in the music business right now with French Montana and Cassie and Christian. And we're really right now just gearing up to, um, you know, you know re really 
really embrace what's going on and create our, new, create our new Bad Boy sound through my children. So now you'll see the legacy of Bad Boy with more of their imprint from Christian, Justin, and Quincy, um, Jesse, Delala, Chance. So look, look forward to the new Bad Boy sound coming, coming to you. Yours. The original business coming back. Give it up for Puff Daddy giving his heart and soul tonight. Thank you so much.